Grace, peace, and love, family, and welcome on back in to the Bread, Wine, and Soul Food channel, where we deal with nothing but what thus saith the Lord, the Holy Scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation, the King James Version of the Bible, and everything that the Father and Jesus Christ has made known and revealed unto us through his Spirit of Truth, also known as the Holy Ghost. So with that being said, all praise, honor, and glory be unto the almighty God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in Jesus' name, because truly without him, we don't exist. The, the, the wonderful works that, that God has displayed in the Bible, we won't know about it. It's all because of the Lord. He revealed this unto us. And this is a great honor to be able to read and understand what thus saith the Lord. So once again, bless Pentecost to everybody. I hope everybody is enjoying their day. And this is the Pentecost. So what we're going to do is we're going to do a brief lesson on what this Pentecost means, what it represents. And we're going to take a look at a few things. So uh, before we get started, we got a, a history or not a history. We're going to take a look at uh, we're going to take a look at this Bible dictionary. This is the Holman Illustrated Bible Dictionary. And we're going to take a look at what Pentecost is. We're going to take a look at the definition for Pentecost. So this right here. Uh, as I stated last night or yesterday uh, on the Bible program, that it was also called the Feast of Weeks. So we're going to take a look and uh, see what this definition is. So it says, and this is the, the feast that comes seven weeks after the Feast of Unleavened Bread and, and uh, Passover. So it says this is the second of the three annual festivals was Pentecost, also called the Feast of Weeks. You can find it here. Uh, listed over there in those uh, scriptures there it said the feast of harvest and the day of first fruits so this is very important because jesus christ was the first fruits or the first one to be born again from the dead and he has many people that will follow him the saints will follow him at his return the ones that fell asleep in Christ Jesus or the ones that's still alive when the Lord makes his return, they're going to get an immortal body and be reigning with the Lord for a thousand years. So that's that's for the saints, though, the ones that kept God's commandments and his patience and his faith in him. OK, so it says. And the day of the first fruits and you can find it over there in uh these Bible scriptures that they have listed. It said it was celebrated seven complete weeks or 50 days after the Passover. So that's what Pentecost mean. Pentecost mean 50. And this feast comes 50 days after the Passover. And it's no wonder that when uh, the Lord told the Jews to tarry at Jerusalem until you be endued with power from on high. Well, 50 days after the Lord had raised up he sent his Holy Ghost 50 days after. So let's see. It says uh, essentially a harvest celebration. The term weeks was used of the period of grain harvest from the barley harvest to the wheat harvest, a period of about seven weeks. At this time, the Lord was credited as the source of rain and fertility. So this the, the Lord is the one who give the rain and he's the one that makes the fruit of the earth grow. It's him. All of these other false gods, they, they don't even exist. It's the Lord that's doing this. Let's see, though. It said it was also, or it was called the day of first fruits because it marked the beginning of the time in which people were to bring offering of first fruits. So it was the first crop that, uh, that, that, that came up after the spring, after the Lord had blessed the increase of the field. It was the first ones that came up. And this is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to bring your best unto the Lord. So let's go and take a look and see, because all of these days, they are a shadow of things to come. They all represent something. So let's take a look at this in Colossians 2. Colossians 2 and verse 16. And you know, a lot of times, a lot of people like to use this to say, oh, you can't judge me because I do this. Look. This is talking about somebody who believing in Jesus Christ and keeping all of his holy days and feast days. That's who this is talking to. Not somebody that's celebrating Christmas and Easter because that stuff is pagan. You're not supposed to be celebrating that no way. So Paul was telling these Colossians, don't let nobody judge you and keeping the Pentecost and keeping the unleavened bread, the Passover. That's who he was talking to, not the other way around. So he said, this is Colossians 2 and 16. 
He said, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath day. So he said, don't let nobody judge you because you're observing these things. All right. He's, look at what he's saying. He said, which are a shadow of things to come. But the body is of Christ. So all of these days that we celebrate, uh, uh, all of the holy days that the Lord has given us to, uh, uh, to recognize, these are a shadow of things to come. It's something that's pointing toward what's really to be coming. All right. So let's see, because this Pentecost is representing a year of liberty, a year of freedom. All of the saints that died in Christ Jesus, when he make his return, they're going to be free from the grave just as he was raised up from the grave. So this is this is a very great time to be celebrating and be joyous because the Lord is giving us liberty now. Now we free from all of the things that was against us. The Lord is going to destroy death when he gets back here or after that a thousand year millennium period is over. But that's when the Lord make his return. The Lord is doing a lot of great things in this year of Pentecost, raising up the dead. He's going to be teaching. It's, it's going to be a lot of stuff going on. So let's go and take a look at something else. Deuteronomy 16 and 16, because these things were supposed to be kept. These days were supposed to be kept and observed throughout all of our generations. But let's take a look at this. Uh, Deuteronomy 16. Let's start at verse 16. Let's take a look at that. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. Where are we at? Right here. Okay. Deuteronomy 16 and 16. It says, Three times in a year shall all thy males appear before the Lord thy God in the place which he shall choose. And the Feast of Unleavened Bread, which was already passed about seven weeks ago, and in the Feast of Weeks, which is, this is the feast that we recognize in right now. And in the Feast of Tabernacles, which will be coming up shortly. He said, and they shall not appear before the Lord empty. So when you go up to the feast, they were supposed to bring up offerings, food, and drink offerings, and whatever else your soul lusted after at the feast. He said, you weren't supposed to come empty handed. He said, every man shall give as he is able. According to the blessing of the Lord thy God, which he have given thee. So you were supposed to give and bring back whatever the Lord, whatever he increased you with. You're supposed to bring the best up to the feast. That's what this was for. Let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go and look at uh, uh, Leviticus 23. Let's go and see it over here. Leviticus 23. And let's take a look at verse 1. We're just taking a look at what, these, what this Pentecost represent and what's going to be happening. And it's still significant unto this very day because, you know, you got people that's, you got saints that's in a grave waiting for the Lord to make his return so that they can be raised up immortal beings. See, this is what we looking for. But anyway, this happens in the year of Pentecost, the year of liberty. The Lord is going to loose the ones that's, that, that, that is deemed worthy to raise up in the first resurrection. The first fruits, they coming up out of the grave. So death ain't going to have no power over them no more. So watch this. Leviticus 23 and 1. It said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, Concerning the feast of the Lord, which ye shall proclaim to be holy convocations, even these are my feasts. So these are not the feasts of the Jews and nobody else. These feasts belong to the Lord. Let's take a look at something else. Let's skip down to verse... Uh, Let's skip down to verse 9. It said, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, When ye be come into the land which I give unto you, and shall reap the harvest thereof, then ye shall bring a sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest unto the priest. And Jesus, he was a representation of that sheaf, because he had to go before the Lord and be accepted before the Lord. After he raised up out of the grave. That's why he told Mary, don't touch me. Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended unto my father. Because Jesus was that sheaf. Watch this. It said, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord. To be accepted for you. So the Lord was, I mean, the Lord, he just, he, he is the word in the flesh. So we reading about it here in the law. And then we're going to go and take a look at an account of this actually happening over in John 20. The Lord did exactly right here what the law did, what, what the law said. As far as him uh, going before the Lord and being accepted, the Lord Jesus Christ, he represented that sheaf. 
And he was way before the father. He went and presented himself before the father. But we're going to take a look at that in a few. It said, and he shall wave the sheaf before the Lord to be accepted for you. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. When did the Lord go and appear before the father? After he rose up from the grave afterwards. This was the day after the Sabbath day, remember? He said, and ye shall offer that day when ye wave the sheaf and he lamb without blemish of the first year for a burnt offering unto the Lord. So now let's go and take a look at this account now, because Jesus, he, he, he fulfilled this law. Let's go and take a look. John 20. Let's go back over here and see this over here. Because the Lord, he was our offering. He went before the Lord. That's why, like I said, he... He said, uh, don't touch me because I have not yet ascended unto my father. Let's go and take a look at this. John 20. Let's see this. John 20, verse 1. Let's read uh, 1 through 7 and then we'll skip down. It said, the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher and see if the stone taken away, taken away from the sepulcher. So, this right here eliminates that early Sunday morning service stuff because the Lord, he was already risen. As a matter of fact, the scriptures let us know he rose up at the end of the Sabbath day as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week. We should all know that Sunday is the first day of the week by now. All right. And Monday is the first day of the work week. But the Sabbath day or the day that we call Saturday, that's the seventh day of the week. So anyway. Mary Magdalene came early Sunday morning when it was still dark. It said unto the sepulcher and see if the stone taken the way from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and saith unto them that which was John. They have taken away the Lord out of it, out of the sepulcher and we know not where they have laid him. Where well, the Lord he, is, he had already risen at this time. We're going to see though. It said, Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple and came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together and the other disciple did outrun Peter and came first to the sepulcher. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet went he not in. So he saw the Lord's uh, uh, clothes that he was wrapped up in. He saw them lying in there, but he didn't see Jesus there because Jesus had already rose from the grave. Now, let's see. Verse six, and Jesus is indeed the first fruits. He the firstborn from the dead, like the scriptures tell us. Well, what did he say that? Let me see. He said he was the firstborn of every creature. Colossians one, Colossians one and 15. I mean, We're going to come back to uh, John 20 in a few. He said, who is the image of the invisible God? The firstborn of every creature. He was the firstborn. He was the firstborn from the dead. So now let's go back and take a look now. So it said, then come and Simon, we back at John uh, 20, 20 and 6 at this time. Then come and Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulcher and see if the linen clothes lie. And the napkin that was about, the, about his head, not lying with the linen clothes, but wrapped together in a place by itself. And I guess this is symbolic of, you know, when, um, when I, let me not say I guess, but you can go and do your research on this. Uh, in Jewish tradition or the uh, or this culture at this time, uh, when you finish with a meal, you know, if it was good, you will fold up the napkin and say, no, don't touch the table. You got unfinished business going here. But if you balled up the, 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 the napkin, that would mean I'm done. You could take the, you could clear the table away. So. This is what this means. This the Lord, he got some unfinished business on this earth and he going to come back. That's why we seen uh, the, 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 the napkin folded up neatly here in the scriptures. But let's skip down. Let's skip on down to verse uh, 11. Let's skip to 11. It said, but Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and see if two angels in white sitting. The one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid him. 
And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. So Jesus was standing here and she didn't understand that that was Jesus there. What did Jesus tell her? Jesus said unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? I love how the Lord be doing things. <laughs> I love how he be doing things. He he know exactly what she doing, but he asking her. Look at this. He says, she, supposing him to be thou, be the gardener, saith unto him, Sir, if thou hast borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. So he said, she she thought he was a gardener, like upkeeping the garden or the, or the tomb or whatever. And she was like, well, if you moved him somewhere, tell me where you laid him at. What did Jesus tell her? Jesus said unto her, Mary, she turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, which is to say, master. So now he revealed himself to her. Like you, I, you was looking for me. I'm right here. I rose up from the grave, just like according to the scriptures, just like the scriptures said. He said, Jesus said unto her, touch me not. Remember, you couldn't put your hand on none of the first fruits until it had been accepted before the Lord. We're going to take a look at that in a few. This is what, see the Lord, he, he, he's embodying the scriptures. Look at this. He said, Jesus saith unto her, touch me not, for I am not yet ascended to my father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend unto my father and your father and to my God and your God. So he had to go before the father and be accepted. Let's go back and take a look at this now because he's lining up everything that the Lord Jesus Christ did lined up perfectly with the law. He fulfilled everything concerning him. Watch this. Let's go back and take a look now. Leviticus 23. You know, also the, 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 uh, the Feast of Pentecost, the, the spirit was poured out over in Acts 2. And everybody was prophesying, speaking in tongues. They was all speaking the word of God. And everybody heard. You had all a, a bunch of people, a bunch of Jews out of every out of every nation there at Jerusalem, hearing exactly what everybody was saying. Everybody was speaking the word of God. They all heard the word of God in the same language. So those new tongues that they were speaking with was the word of God. Let's go and take a look at something else. Just like when we get baptized, for the most part, our conversation is going to be nothing but what thus said the Lord. Now we speaking with new tongues. We're not speaking filthy no more. We watching our conversation because pure religion and undefiled is. Uh, uh, let's go and take a look at that real quick. James one. I ain't even going to quote it. I, I'm going I'm to show you exactly what it is. James one. James one. Let's see what pure religion is. James one and verse 27. What did it say? Pure religion and undefiled before God. And the father is this, to visit, visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and to keep himself unspotted from the world. But look at this. What else does it say? Verse 26. If any man among you seem to be religious and bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. So, you know, our religion ain't vain. We, we, we got some constraint and some discipline over here. This is what our conversation is. What thus said the Lord. So now let's go back and take a look at Leviticus uh, 23. And let's have a look at verse uh, Leviticus 23. This time let's pick it up at verse 14. Leviticus 23 and 14. So this is why the Lord couldn't be touched by Mary or nobody else because he had to ascend to the father. So look at this. It said, ye shall eat neither bread nor parched corn nor green ears until the selfsame day that ye have brought an offering unto your God. It shall be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So you couldn't put your hand on the first fruits until you brought an offering before the Lord your God. So they couldn't put their hands on Jesus. Or this is why Jesus told Mary, don't touch me, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to my father. He had to go and be accepted before the father before anybody could touch him. Because then afterwards we see where they came and uh, held him at his feet. So let's go and see something now. It said it should be a statue forever throughout your generations and all your dwellings. So this is a perpetual thing. This is an ongoing thing. We still a generation. So therefore, this is still in effect. It said, and ye shall count unto you from the morrow after the Sabbath. 
from the day that ye brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbaths shall be complete. This is the Pentecost. Even unto the morrow after the seventh Sabbath, Sabbath shall ye number fifty days, and ye shall offer a new meat offering unto the Lord. And because we don't do offerings anymore, you know, this doesn't apply to us. We don't do a burnt offerings and sacrifices that way no more. It said, ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two tenths deals. Now, take a look at what these wave loaves is baked with. This is the only time you're going to see a sacrifice baking with leaven. And that, that leaven represent that sin that we were tainted by at one point. So watch this. It said, ye shall bring out of your habitations two wave loaves of two temp deals. They shall be a fine flour. They shall be baking with leaven. They are the first fruits unto the Lord. So because we have sin, this points to us needing a savior, which is Jesus Christ. He's washing away our sin, but we were baking with leaven. We we are we are new creatures, but we have sin before. Let's go and take a look at something else now. Let's go over here to uh uh what is it? Ecclesiastes 7. Let's go over there. Ecclesiastes 7. And let's take a look at verse 20. Because ain't, ain't we didn't all fail short of the glory of God. But that just goes to show you that the Lord is our redeemer. He will redeem us and save us. When we confess our sins, be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ and walk in the newness of life, which is his word. Follow his instruction. Listen to his counsel because it's wise. It said, for there is not a just man upon earth that doeth good and sin it sinneth not. You see, so that's what that leaven represent. Represents sin. OK, let's go and take a look at something else now. James one. Let's see how we born again and what we call We'll be called the first fruits unto the Lord and we be gotten through the word of truth. But hang on, let's see something real quick. Let me show you what this definition for begot is. Let me see. Let me pull this up real quick. Give me a second. Hopefully I can get to it. Uh, let me see. One second. James 1. James 1 and 18. And what does it say? It said, of his own will begot he us with the word of truth. So he begot us. Let's see what begot means. He fathered us. He created us. He bred us. It says, typically, typically, a man, sometimes of a man and a woman, bring a child into existence by the process of reproduction. So the Lord is bringing us or adopting us into his family through the word of God. We are being washed with the Holy Ghost, with his spirit. He pouring out his water on us, making us clean. He even said he was going to put a new spirit within us. So let's take a look at this. Because all of this is important. He said of his own will, be God us with the word of truth. So how are we born into God's family? Through the word. And remember, Jesus uh, told Nicodemus, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. So you got to change your mind first. Once you change your mind, walk in the newness of life, you continue to live out your life for Jesus Christ. When you put this body in the ground, because this body is a seed, when you put it in the ground, Lord willing, the Father have mercy on us, raise us up in that first resurrection and we will be considered the first fruits just like james is saying right here look at what he said he said that we should be a kind of first fruits of his creatures we will be the first ones that raise up from the grave if we walk this path all the way to the end and that's why the lord gave us the holy ghost to lead us and guide us into all truth it shows us when we fall in short what we need to correct and what we need to do it ain't always good. It don't always sound good when we got to change and look within ourselves. But at the end of the day, it's necessary for salvation. The scriptures also let us know that we through much tribulation shall inherit the kingdom. What was that? Acts 22 and 14, I believe it was. Let me just make sure. Let me see if that was it. I think he said it over there. Acts 22 and 14. Let me just see. What was it at? Let me see. Acts 22. Was it Acts 22 and 14? Where is it? Where is that at? Where he said it at? Anyway, if we can't find it, we're going we gonna to look and see. Hang on. Let me see. 
Give me one second. Let me see. Acts 14, I think. Let me see. I might have it wrong. I might have it wrong. Oh, here we go. I, I said it backwards. <laughs> it said, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith that we, through much tribulation, mut he said that, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So we got to go through some things. But nevertheless, that fiery trial to try us, man, our, our, faith, our faith is being purified through the trials and the tribulations that we face. But anyway, let's go and take a look at something else. Let's go over here now to uh, let's go and look at Romans. Because these things are necessary if we want to be raised up in the first resurrection. We got to put the sin away so that we can be the first fruits of the Lord's creation. Look at what he said. He said, this is Romans 6 and 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? So shall we continue in sin... And, you know, take the Lord's mercy and grace for granted. What did Paul say? God forbid. Absolutely not. You're going to keep sinning because the Lord is having mercy on you. No, you got to stop. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. You, you, get, you go get locked up and you do something where you need to get bonded out of jail. You're not going to go and do it again. Well, Jesus Christ is our bells bondsman. He paid the price for us. Why would we continue to go back and build up a foundation that got us locked up? Don't do that no more. So he said, how shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? We kill, we killing this flesh. We can't live how we used to live before we got knowledge of what thus said the Lord. We got a new spirit now. We thinking differently. Our mindset has changed. And a lot of people ain't going to like you for that. But so what? We trying to be the first fruits of the Lord. Ain't none of these people that don't like you. Ain't none of them died for you. I serve the two is to the Lord Jesus Christ and the father. And that's it. It's time out for trying to please somebody. You'll never be able to please anybody. <laughs> Everybody. You, you, if you're trying to men, please look, the word of God is not for you. It's not for you. If you're trying to please men over God, simple as that. But anyway, it said, no, ye not. That so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. And <clears throat> so the ones that got baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, that was symbolic of you crucifying or drowning that old man. We was baptized into his death. He said, therefore, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the father even so, we also should walk in newness of life. So that's what this baptism represent. We was baptized into Jesus Christ's death. And now when it, that we didn't raise up from out of the, the water, we walking in the newness of life now. We got the spirit of the Lord. Because once you get baptized and you, you be obedient, the Lord will give you the Holy Ghost. Let's take a look. He said, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. You're going to be the first fruits in a year of Pentecost because you belong to the Lord. Let's go and take a look at something else. As a matter of fact, Ephesians. What do he say over here in Ephesians 5? Watch this. Because we belong to the Lord. So Ephesians 5. Let's take a look at this right here. Ephesians 5. And let's have a look at verse... Let's start at verse, uh, let's start at verse 22. Verse 22, he said, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. So a wife is supposed to submit herself to her own husbands as she would unto the Lord. So if she not submitting herself to her husband as she would to the Lord, she violating what thus said the Lord. It said, for the husband is the head of the wife. Even as Christ is the head of the church and he is the savior of the body. Just like in a marriage, the husband is the head and he is the savior of the body. And if it came down to it, he would have to he would have to give up his life for his wife. Just like Jesus Christ gave up his life for the church. And said, therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, 
So let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. And I know, you know, sisters don't like to hear that. But at the end of the day, we read what thus said the Lord and your emotions and, and opinion. It really, truly don't matter when we dealing with what thus said the Lord. The scriptures say exactly what it say, you know, and the husbands, what the husband's supposed to do. This this ain't a one way street. It's a two way street. The husband's supposed to love their wives. As Christ loved the church. Husbands, love your wives even, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. So you're supposed to be able to give your life for your wife. Is what thus said the Lord. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. So wait a minute. So he's cleaning it up with the washing of water with the word? Why? What's the reason for all of this? Let's take a look. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. You see why we doing all of this? Because we're going to present ourselves. The Lord is going to bring us to himself and the father one day. This is why it's important. For us to submit ourselves to the Lord and in a marriage, we got to obey these things that is being written about a marriage because all of this is symbolic to God. Let's go and take a look. So let's go and see something else. Let's start wrapping this up. Let's go over here to uh, 2 Corinthians 5 because we're supposed to be new creatures coming up with the Lord, having a newness of a life, a new way of thinking. And one day. We're going to be raised up with a glorious body. Go and take a look at uh, Daniel uh, uh, 12 and 2 through 3. And also 1 Corinthians uh, 15. Go and read that as well. You can go and read that on your own. We're just giving a brief overview of what this Pentecost represent and, you know, what's going to be taking place in the year of Pentecost. So it said, therefore, 2 Corinthians uh, 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So if you are in Christ Jesus, the, the new the, the new life is taking place and the old things in the past, that's done away with. That's finished. You got to walk in the spirit of the Lord. Let's go and take a look. Let's go over here. Because one day we're going to see the Lord as he is. Watch this. Look at what the Lord did for us. Look at what Jesus did. Behold, this is 1 John 3 and verse 1. Behold, what manner of love the Father have bestowed upon us. So the Lord then showed us this great love. What did he do? That we should be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. So the Lord loved us so much that we can actually be called the sons of God in the full sense of the word. He's going to raise us up one day to immortality, to eternal life, living with him in his kingdom. Beloved. Now are we the sons of God. So we the sons of God when we led by the spirit of God. If you ain't led by the spirit of God, you don't belong to him. He said, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. So how we looking at this flesh and blood, we, are, we already understand that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. And what we are right now, this is, this is not what we going to be. We got a we got a, 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 a higher form that we going to take place or that's going to take place that we going to. That we're going to inhabit a new body, a body that can't feel no pain no more ain't going to be no more sorrow, no more death. We're going to inherit immortality, just like the Lord Jesus Christ is immortal. We're going to be just like him having a, having a body that he had. He said, uh, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. So we'll be just like him. Because remember, flesh and blood can't look on God and live. So obviously you will have a new, a new body. Watch this. It said, and every man that hath this hope in himself or in him purifieth himself, even as he is pure. So if you looking forward to what thus said the Lord, or you looking forward to the kingdom of God and being an immortal being adopted into the family of God, you're going to leave all of those sinful ways alone. You're going you're gonna to drop that. Let's go and take a look. Let's wrap it up right here. Let's go over here. So let's go over here to Romans 8. Romans 8 and 22. Because this year of Pentecost, the first fruits is coming up to the Lord. 
And it's a whole lot of other stuff that goes along with this Pentecost. But for the sake of time, you know, uh, we just we'll just sum it up right here with this. So Romans eight and verse twenty two. It said, for we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now. So everybody's suffering. The whole creation is. And you know what? The, the, the way we going through things, man, it ain't even worthy to be compared. The sufferings that we going through now is not worthy to be compared to the glory that's going to be revealed in us. So let's see. He said, and not only they. But ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit. We got the first fruits of the spirit. We got the chance at getting raised up in the first resurrection. Let's see what else he said. Even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body. So we waiting to be raised up in immortal being. So when you feeling like, you know. This life is, is more to it than this, you know, and you're not really satisfied here. Well, this scripture is testifying to there's something better after this, because the whole world is groaning and travailing in the pain and pain and together uh, together until now. So with that being said, I'm praying for all of the viewers, all of the subscribers that tune in now and later. I pray that the Lord send his Holy Spirit. May he correct us. May he give us a heart to show us when we going wrong may he give us the the heart to correct our shortcomings and when we do go wrong may he spend send his holy spirit let it rest mightily upon us i love you all so much enjoy this feast of pentecost until next time peace and love family in the mighty name of jesus